today's video, we're going to be learning how to build a solar power system inside of a wooden box that anybody can build. And this is great for an off-grid solar power system for RVs, cabins, or boats. A lot of people want to have all of the solar power system components consolidated to one central location. So this box has everything that a solar power system needs, minus the solar panels and minus the batteries. Because usually the batteries and the solar panels are stationarily mounted. So with this system, we have an inverter and a solar charge controller. We have a low voltage disconnect and a fuse box. And then on the top, we have an MT50 to tell what's going on. And then we have solar panel input wires and battery cables. So you connect the battery cables to your battery bank and you connect this cable to your solar panels. And then in the front, you, you have the inverter AC receptacles. And then in the back, we have the fuse box for 12 volt appliances. And having it in a box like this makes it very easy to expand or scale or swap out parts if they break. It's very easy to swap this out for a 60 amp, especially if your box is a little bit bigger. I shoved a lot in this box, but it has a lot of airflow and it's very, very strong. It also has everything. We even have a low voltage disconnect you don't have to worry about over discharging your batteries. We also have a cigarette lighter adapter in the front. I also put hinges on the top of this lid so I can mess with the wires and then when I'm done, I can close it up and then it's small and it fits in the back of a closet space. And this video is gonna be very beginner friendly, but it doesn't go over crimping wires that much. So please watch my other tutorial on that. Also, this is designed to work with any of the systems that I recommend on how to build in my other videos or on my website. So the classic 400 watt, the minimalist, the off-grid king, all of those systems that I teach you guys how to build, you can build in a box. If you want detailed pictures of this box, please check out my website as well. But I mean, if you look at this, it is dead simple. This is a couple dollars worth of L brackets, hinges, and some cheap wood at Home Depot. And this thing is rock solid. And yeah, it's freaking cool, guys. Look at this. I mean, come on, don't you want to build this? I had so much fun building this. I think you guys will love it. So let's get started. This project, we want to take a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter and MPPT and put them in a box, but they need to have ample airflow. So we're gonna have air coming underneath here and we're gonna have another board right here and we're gonna lift it up with a piece of wood. So this is pretty much the layout. I wanna have the MPPT a little forward so we can have all the circuit breakers and stuff upside down on this side, but it's just gonna be a simple box. And I wanna have lots of airflow. I want this to air have airflow in the front and back so the fans work properly because if you make a box enclosure, like a plastic one that I see on YouTube, these things can overheat and I want this thing to dissipate as much heat as possible. So these components last a really long time. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There will be good airflow. Cut that. Now we have a piece of wood. Now we just need to put this right here. And then we just need to repeat it on all four corners. Ta-da, look at that. Isn't that nice? This is the plywood that we're gonna put on the top. Let's see how well it fits. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> All the corners line up. Dang it, the only problem I see is I can't get the input terminal screw down tab thing. This little screwdriver, this should be able to fit. Oh crap, it doesn't. I have a crazy idea. Imagine if we just put some hinges and then we can access all the wires and view stuff and then close it up when we're done. All right guys, so I only have one hinge to work with right now, but check it out. Isn't that cool? Went to the store and I got some better material and I rebuilt it and I also spray painted it. And this is the other side of it. I probably need to spray paint it again, but I think it's fine because the top side's gonna be what's showing and it's super black. So yeah, it looks way better, better hinges too. <laughs> I can't believe it, it looks so cool. Look at this. Wow, it almost closes. It's missing just a little bit. Just mounted the inverter. Now I added these little L brackets so that we can screw this in when we don't have to open it up for months at a time. So it just closes and then you put a little screw to secure it. But you can notice that I put the wood up on top and this is really good for supporting this joint 
but you also need to have these cables coming in right here anyways so you need this to be open you also want lots of airflow because there's cooling fans on the back and then the air intake is in the front and you also want these plugs to be unobstructed also for radiant heat you want the sides to be open that's the thing with these inverters if you put it inside of an enclosure you need it to have a lot of airflow what I want to do is mount the MT50 on the top I don't have a hole saw and I don't want this going too far down because it could obstruct some of the other wires so I'm gonna have it mounted with a little bit of room underneath it and we're going to put some screws right here to drill a hole for the solar panel wires we're going to put it like this and we're going to make it stick out the top so we're putting these solar wires in it heat shrink for protection and also these little things so that it won't get pulled or yanked off and then hurt the input terminals on the solar charge controller drilled a big hole and added this marine grade cigarette lighter adapter and it barely fits in there because when this closes, there's not much room for this wire. I'm putting wheels on the bottom of this cart, but I found these furniture mover things and you put them on the bottom of chairs and it helps them slide around. And you can move it around easily now. I really like that. But yeah, if you need this thing not to move, you need rubber ones. And I couldn't find them at the store, but these work great. All right, guys, we made some progress. It was very hard to find a good location for this fuse box because the wires are gonna be shooting out the bottom and the top. And I want this accessible because because if I put it on the top, it would just look kind of stupid and there's no room over here for it. And we also have some large gauge wires. I also added a low voltage battery disconnect. This is called a battery protect by Victron Energy. So when the battery is too low, it will turn off the loads on the fuse box. This thing has its own low voltage disconnect, but the fuse box doesn't. So that's why I'm using the Victron battery protect. And these are very smart to use regardless. They're great, they're pretty cheap too. It's like 50 to 100 bucks. And your investment of a battery bank will not fail because you forget and the loads keep pulling energy and then your batteries are damaged. So yeah, very smart choice to have these with lead acid battery banks. Added the positive cable for the battery protect, but now I need to strip this and we're gonna actually wire this into one of the negative bus terminals on the back here. Just like that, so nice. It's literally perfect. First little wire installed. We have a lot more to go now. Now we're adding the cigarette lighter adapter to the fuse box, but I noticed that when this hinge closed, you need to make sure that the wires do not get caught up in here. And I think this is good enough. I've tried it a few times and it doesn't pinch itself at all. You have the whole entire wire installed, but now I need to put some little leads on it and we can put it into the input terminals. We added some connectors and now the cigarette lighter is now installed. So now I installed a little white string and I used heat shrink to cover up this little knot that I made and it holds it so it doesn't go too far. And then when it folds up, it folds up nice and tight. So it serves its purpose. I also added the communication cable for the solar charge controller to its little screen. And then I also added the circuit breaker. It's a 50 amp breaker because this is a 40 amp solar charge controller. Now this system has all of the major components and we need to wire them up with large gauge wires. We need to connect the battery disconnect to the fuse box. We need to connect the solar charge controller. And what I like to do for this step is make a crimping station. What I do is I grab some wire from this pile and then I use my tools to cut it, measure it and mark it and strip it. And then I add a connector. And then I also mark it with a Sharpie and I have this in my other video to tell what the orientation is. And then I bring it over here to my little three point crimper with my impact gun. And then we use heat shrink with the heat gun. And then I mount it on the board. So that's my general procedure for crimping large wires. To go up here, so I'm thinking, let's see, if we open and close this while it's connected, what does that look like? It's actually pretty good. That's not bad and we can mount this part so this doesn't move can feel it and see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That fits inside the connector perfectly. So check this out. We have both of the wires connected and they fold up nice and easy and there's no bends or kinks they fold up really nice and i have six gauge wire but it's unfused except for with the bolt-on fuse at the main battery because it has a 175 amp fuse at the battery and six gauge wire under four feet can easily handle 150 to 200 amps this is about one foot connected to two gauge wire 
So it would be able to protect this wire at the bolt-on fuse at the battery. So it might be weird seeing a cable like a six gauge connected directly to inverter terminals but if you think about it how long these cables are it would be able to trip a fuse no problem and then we have a circuit breaker up here for 50 amps for a 40 amp solar charge controller so everything is protected all devices and all wires are protected and this system is now done i don't think there's anything else i need in it so i also added a 175 amp bolt on fuse for the battery and all the wiring is completely done. Everything has power. We're gonna hook up this system to a 100 amp hour VMAX battery. It's brand new sealed lead acid. We're gonna hook it right up to this thing. First I connected the fuse or the positive side and then we're gonna do the negative, but you're gonna see a spark because the inverter has not been connected to a battery for a while. So the capacitors need to charge up and now they're all charged. So I connected the sealed lead acid battery and the solar charge controller came on because the green light illuminated and the inverter works. I can plug in some appliances and do a load test and let's go to the front screen and it says 12.7 volts and we need to connect solar panels now. So now that everything on the inside is programmed and wired up, we can close the top of this box. So I have these little L brackets and then we secure it. So now it will not open. And if I want to lift it, I can lift it from pretty much any part. It's really strong. Hey guys, this system is pretty much complete. It's programmed, it's set, it's built, and I love it. And now we just need to hook it up to some solar panels. And then these connectors are what I use with my thousand watts on the roof of this RV. So tomorrow I'm gonna to hook it up to some sunshine and we'll see if it charges up properly. So my Tesla battery has a converter and it outputs 14 volts. So I have this wire cable with an adapter I just made and I'm charging this sealed lead acid with my Tesla battery with this MPPT. It's only one amp though and the volts is not that high and this is practically a full battery, but it's so cool that I'm actually charging with my Tesla battery. I'm going to be using this this year to do load tests and efficiency tests on various new lithium drop-in lead acid replacements. So I'm going to keep this box as it is for quite some time. I don't think I really need to add any improvements because everything is working great. So for me, this is like a test bed for testing various solar power system components for this year's new products. So thank you so much for watching this build. I really liked making this little box. Let me know if you guys have any questions below and please check out the website. I'll talk to you guys later, bye.